Hello everyone and welcome to another random bits and pieces segment from my brain and today sit a while for we are playing some more franchise Aki Manager 6 as part of the Ottawa Senators. The Ottawa Senators who are not Stanley Cup champions which is the first time in a very long time we can say that. So, um, as usual, as usual, I have simmed all the way to July 1st, and there's a few twists this time. Um, I'll talk about that here in just a minute. Um, so, first things first, is I had to deal with Mike Fisher and Tyler Seguin. They were both not happy. Uh, with us and they did not want to extend with us so I decided to try to trade them before I lose them for absolutely nothing so as it would turn out I accepted both trades from Nashville so I made two trades with the Predators um, <clears throat> so as you know it's a funny thing sometimes. I mean, in real life, that's where Mike Fisher got traded right about that time, you know. So he ends up in Nashville just like he did in real life, right around the same time that he did in real life as well. Uh, and I didn't have many great offers for Mike Fisher, and David Leguan was probably the best uh, offer I had. Uh, it was either him or Nick Antropov in Toronto who was as old um, so I went with Leguan he's still a two-star player player excuse me and he needed a contract extension so I gave it to him so that happened then of course I offered the most interesting piece that I had to offer which was Tyler Seguin and I had a lot of pretty interesting offers. Uh, I was offered J. Boomister. I declined. And in the end, I was. I hesitated between two uh, offers that I got. Uh, one of them was from the Blues. Uh, they offered me a 19 year old Vladimir Tarasenko. Uh, and I said no because Nashville offered me what I was really looking for. which was a young left-handed defenseman. So I don't have uh, many of those uh, that are going to be pretty good. The right side is uh, pretty much set with Carlson, Dottie, and Pietrangelo. I, I really don't have anything uh, to say about that. But on the left side, it's a... I mean, Char is getting older. Uh, and then I don't really have a lot of great options. So Roman Yossi is going to be pretty good in a couple years. So that was my reasoning with that. So that's why I went with Yossi instead of going with Tarasenko. Now don't, don't get me wrong, Tarasenko is a beast. Or he should be in this game at least. But I, I went with what I needed. Uh, and what I needed was Roman Yossi. So, he's with the sense now. Oh, I forgot to delete that. Alright, so there's been a few news around the league. Uh, Barry Trotz lost his job as the coach for the Stars, and I believe that they had just got him not too long ago, but uh, fired there. Replaced by John Tortorella. So... Tortorella Torts is now the coach for Dallas, so that's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, I am a fan of Tortorella. I know that he's a very divisive uh, coach. You either like him or you don't. Uh, I like him because he's not afraid of saying things the way they are sometimes. Um, I think there's way too many politically correct people in the NHL that, you know, just uh, feed you the pre-digested crap that you hear all the time, you know, oh, you know, uh, we didn't have any luck with the bounces and whatnot, so Tortorella is a little bit more direct, and I can definitely appreciate that about him, uh, so, anyway, oh, and since Dallas is highlighted, one of the trade offers for Tyler Sagan was Jamie Benn. But, uh, like I said, I was looking more for a defenseman. Uh, 
so Columbus fired their general manager, so Dave Taylor is not the GM in Columbus anymore, and he is replaced by Stan Bowman. So if you're uh, if you're a hockey fan, you should be familiar with Stan Bowman, uh, with his work with the Blackhawks. And then I made another trade. That one was offered to me. I didn't seek it out, uh, but it was offered to me. So. <clears throat> Vancouver offered me Anton Rodin for Matt Stajan. So with the acquisition of David Leguan, Matt Stajan was kind of expendable. He's only a star and a half, and I don't really expect him to get any better. He's not really scoring any points, and as far as a you know defensive forward, I think Leguan's going to be better, although more expensive. And I was offered Anton Rodin. Now... I got him because he has good potential and maybe I'm gonna lock out and he's gonna you know develop into his potential and then he's gonna become a serviceable player um, if it doesn't happen that it, let's just consider that a salary dump at that point um, I'm not gonna be overly upset like I said stage on became kind of expendable on my team so it's kind of a kind of a gamble that I decided to take and we'll see if it pays off or not and then we have the usual retirements. So Rod Brennamore in Philadelphia decided to retire. He was 40 years old and still a two-star player. Yeah, he had slowed down 29 points in his last season. So finished his career with Philadelphia, probably what should have happened. But he did have some good years in Carolina in real life. All right. And then... Stefan Robida also retired. Oh, young, 34 years old. He was a two-star player, so retired. Chris Draper has also retired in Phoenix. He was 40, and he was a star and a half player. And they are going to retire his number. And then Nikolai Bibulin also retired, and they are also going to retire his number. Viktor Kozlov in San Jose retired. He was 36. He was a star and a half player. And then the Flyers also lost Yaroslav Modri, um, so retired, and they are going to retire his number as well. So the D in Philadelphia was already not all that great. Um, now they've lost pretty much their best defenseman. So, all right, and then Mikhail Nylander in Carolina retired. He was 38, two-star player still. 22 points last season. Yeah, he was starting to decline a little bit. He probably could have continued a little bit. Uh, Zygmunt Palfi retired with the Islanders. 39 years old, a star and a half. His number will be retired. And Matthew Schneider retires uh, with Montreal. He was 42 and still a two-star player. But yeah, he wasn't used... Uh, all that much. Montreal has a pretty good team as we saw in the last video. They eliminated us. I'm still a little sour about that. N not truly sour. It's I just don't like Montreal. Alright, and they're gonna retire his number as well. And then Alexei Kovalev uh, retired with the Rangers. He was 38, a star and a half. And they are retiring his number. And there's been a few deals that are kind of... Uh, interesting to me at least the Dallas and Detroit one is kind of interesting to me so Dallas uh, trades Yanni Pesanen and Mark Bell to the Red Wings for Daniel Alfredson and Derek Englund so there's no doubt in my mind that Alfredson is the better player in that trade but you know, he's 38. And then the other trade was pretty much one-sided as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, Jonathan Erickson goes to the Blues along with Matt Lashoff for Andrew Hutchinson and Alexei Morozov. So, Erickson in real life kind of has slowed down a lot, for, uh, but he is a two and a half star player in the game. And, you know, Detroit gets a couple of one-star players, so I'm not sure I understand that trade. Might be for cap reasons, maybe. And then Chris Osgood retired with Detroit, and they are retiring his number. 
And finally, uh, since it's a new year in the NHL, we are getting those players for free. So Mika Zibanejad uh, joins us, as well as Pat Canoni. <clears throat> Alright, so now here comes the part that is a little bit of a twist. So I was all the way up to the throat with contracts, so I had to cut players actually so that I could try to sign my younger players. So <laughs> Pat Canoni, which we just got, got cut. And so did Ilya Zubov and Drayson Bowman. So those guys did not really develop. And especially Zubov is now 24 years old. I don't even think he's going to get to that one-star potential. So those two guys got cut so that I can offer contracts to those four guys. Now, that's going to put me at 50 contracts. Um, so there's not going to be, you know, trying to get waivers or anything like that. So the four players that I offered contracts to are Patrick Wierkacz, Andre Peterson, Chris Weinman, and Jacob Silverberg. Now the other part of the twist is that... And that's the first time this has happened. So you see it here. Is that I am running out of money for free agents which means that I'm not gonna be able to sign all of those guys so I don't know which ones are gonna get signed and I might need to actually trade some salary out so that I'm able to sign all of those guys so that is happening so I was looking at my roster and I made a I made a statement way back when uh, several months ago uh, that I would never be trading away Marianosa, and I am starting to think about it. As much of a fan as I was of Osa in real life, <clears throat> he has kind of slowed down a little bit. Uh, he's not even cracking 60 points. I pay him 4.5 millions, and he's a three star player. So. I am thinking of trying to trade Osa for a younger player that's not going to make as much and I am going to do that now and you are going to witness that. So here I am, I said I was never going to trade Marian Osa and look at me coming back on my word. Another candidate would possibly be Chris Kelly but I don't think I'm going to be getting a whole lot of offers for him. So let's try with Marian Osa and see what we're going to get. So I'm going to shop Marian Osa. Ooh, I only have five offers. That's not a good sign. Joey Crab, yeah, I'm not I'm not trading him. I'm probably trading him to the West. Maybe to Chicago. He played there, so that makes sense. Well, actually, Yoni Pitkinen might be interesting. I'm gonna have to check how much he makes. So that could be something that I can go for. Jerome McGinley, wow. I'm gonna have to check how much he makes. Steve Bernier, yeah, probably not really a spot for you, buddy. Maybe. I have to check how much the other ones make. And then Benoit Pouliot, you are probably not going to be making a lot of money. And you probably won't reach potential either. Although, on my team, maybe you will. You're going to have offensive opportunities. All right, but Pitt Cannon is probably the guy that interests me the most. Like I said, my left side of D is not that great. So, all right, so Osa makes 4.5. Pitt Cannon makes, oh, 1.8. I'm going to have to resign him at the end of the, se the season or not. That's That's a great trade for me to make. Maybe. Yeah, you're making too much for me, Ginla. So I would have loved to have Jerome Ginla on the team, even if he's 34, but I, I can't afford you, buddy. Sorry. Uh, Steve Bernie, yeah, probably not. I'm gonna check. Yeah, you're, you're really not making a lot of money. There's a reason for that. You're not uh, that great of a player. So definitely not going to go for you. Let's take a look at Benoit Pouliot. 
Yeah, but no, Puyat doesn't make a lot, and he sang for a few more years. <sighs> what do I do? I really like the Yoni Pit Cannon deal because I don't have to keep him after this year. So I'm, that's who I'm gonna go with. Plus, you know, Marinosa played in Chicago, so it fits real life as well. Look at me. Alright, so I'm gonna. And even then, I'm not sure that they're gonna give me money for free agents. They might not. But uh, I've still shed some salary. I was really up there in salary, so that's gonna help. There you go. We traded Marianoso to Chicago for Yoni Pitkin, and we reduced our salary. All right, so our right side is not as good, but uh, we should be fine. Let's check. I'm sure that it hasn't change there no, actually it did Whew. all right so I made a, a trade that I kind of needed to do for financial reasons so Marinoso is not a senator anymore look at me I lied through my face you can't trust a word I'm saying well I couldn't predict that it would turn out that way I did my best to keep him that was the most logical option all right so I'm gonna need to release those guys. All right, Brooks like is about to be recovered for injury. Remember, he got hurt in the playoffs, and that hurt us. All right, so Patrick Workout is thinking about signing Andre Peterson, Jacob Silver Silverberg, and Chris Weidman. Hopefully, you don't have any Uber uh, incidents. Roman Yossi dumps agent over lack of a new deal. You don't need a new deal. You're signed until... 2013. Then there's been a trade between Dallas and Minnesota. Uh, so Ryan Jones and the rights to Richard Clooney are going to the Minnesota Wild, while Dallas gets Brendan Dobinsky and Brett Bulmer. Ooh, all right, so Ryan Jones. Yeah, Dallas got the better player in here, so we're starting to see trades that don't always make sense, and I... I think that it might sometimes be due to salary cap reasons. All right. All right. Yes, I'm going to be paying little sums of money. Right, and Brooks Lake is finally back from injury. Welcome back to the team. Pavel Detsuk is still out for a month or two. He was out for a long time. Right, Ryan Smith owes a charity golf tournament. So look at him being a nice guy. Uh, Patrick Weirkoch signed. Jacob Silverberg signed. I was very sad when we traded Jacob Silverberg. I was a big fan of him. Nothing against Bobby Ryan, uh, but I was a big fan of Silverberg. 
Capitar uh, visits children at cancer treatment center. So, and the Capitar is now a really great guy. He goes and sees sick children. Yeah, I just don't think you're gonna get number 33, buddy. Um, you're gonna need to wear 43 for now. All right, Andre Peterson signed. And Chris Weinman signed as well. All right, so Andre Peterson wants number, yeah, you're gonna get 60. Yeah, you're not gonna get number six, how about number five? Alright, so my rookies all have signed, which means that I am at 50 contracts, there's no more room for nobody, so even if, you know, Alex Ovechkin shows up in the waivers here, I cannot even put a claim on him. Alright, so you know the drill, by now... <clears throat> uh, by now, there's not gonna be a whole lot going on in the offseason. Uh, Roman Yossi is happy because he signed a new agent. You don't need a new deal, so we're fine. At least not now. Eventually, you're going to need a new deal. You're not signed for life. There's been a trade. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that, and I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> the Trashers moved to Winnipeg, and now the Jets are back, so... I did forget to mention that, and I apologize, so we see the Jets here, and uh, that was part of the funny thing when the Jets came back, they spent a year in the Eastern Conference, so we're going to be seeing the Jets a little bit. Alright, so there's been a trade between the Blackhawks and the Jets, let's take a look. All right, Nicholas Avlid and Klaas Dahlbeck are going to Winnipeg for Peter Buda. Hey, oh, Peter Buda is going to go and back up in Chicago, I guess. Because the starter should be Corey Crawford. All right, so, yeah, we're close enough to real life now, uh, to, you know, 2020 in the game that uh, we should be familiar with most of the names that we see, even if you just started to watch Aki a few years ago or something. Oh yeah, uh, other news is <clears throat> Lindy Ruff's contract ex uh, expired and I renewed him even if we didn't win the cup. I, I think he's doing a pretty good job. So he is still my coach. And now we have a trade proposal from the Devils. And the Devils are offering us Eric Jelena for Zach Smith. Yeah, I'm gonna say no. Eric Jena had a certain potential in real life. He had a pretty good shot, uh, from what I remember, but that was pretty much all he had. So, he didn't play for a crazy long amount of time in the league. Alright, August 1st. Alright. So, we have that going on. Oh, then Chicago made another trade with Washington. Maybe they're trying to uh, fit Marianos on the on their uh, salary cap situation. So, they traded Brian Bickle to the Capitals for Mike Santorelli. Yeah, pretty similar trade. Twenty-five. They're both twenty-five. All right, Mario Lemieux made the Hall of Fame. Really? 
Yep. Then Pierre Turgeon made the Hall of Fame as well, as he should. Danfus was in the Hall of Fame, and John Van Beesbrook was in the Hall of Fame. There you go. Alright, and we're gonna go through August probably fairly quickly. Again, we're probably not going to be probably not gonna be uh, seeing a whole lot of action. Sorry, I was counting my number of scouts. Pavel Detsuk is ready to return to practice, so he's going to be ready for training camp. Yeah, that that injury sucked. My first line left winger missed the entire playoffs. Could be why I couldn't get past Montreal. Alright, Detsuk getting ready to come back yes we know <clears throat> alright that took his finally recovered from his injury let's put him on the lineup Redder is getting pretty pretty much better. Oh, that Roden guy got some balance aggression fighting team player passing offensive read. Okay, yeah, continue to improve. Ryan Dezingle. Ooh, four star potential, I'm not sure about that. Sounds like a an overreach. Alright, so we're starting to get scouting reports again. Alright, in 20 days we start our preseason against the Florida Panthers. Who could have Tyler Seguin? I thought about Boomister, but he's 28, I think. So Roman Yossi sounded a lot more sexy to me with his 21 years old. Gonna be around longer. Yes, I know, not a lot going on. And then we're gonna have the training camp uh, development report and that's gonna be a good one as well. So we can see if that Roden guy is getting more stats again. Strange off-season workout leads to success for Rallo. All right, so Greg Rallo has not been sitting around doing nothing this offseason, instead he has been putting in long hours building up his strength, but not in the way you might think. Said Rallo, I haven't put a minute of time in, in at the gym, instead I've been doing my best Rocky IV montage. Oh yeah, we've seen that. So, Greg Rallo had a different workout. He's 31 star player, has, has no stats, so he just entered the universe. All right, and uh, Valtteri Filpula was uh, not able to cook his steaks properly, and he got burnt by his barbecue. So Valtteri Filpula is 27, and he plays for Columbus in my universe. All right, so in eight days... All 
I, I might as well recall everybody now. All right. Oh, that's Jeff Glass. I'm gonna recall him. He's probably not gonna play. He never does, unless there's an injury. Lucas Bisa. Mark Borowiecki. Um, he's not gonna be back with the Suns. It's kind of sad, but it also kind of makes sense. Eric Greiba. Yoni Pitkinen, I just acquired you. Brian Lee. Dagovans. Oh, yeah, he's on the lineup because he played in the playoffs. Drazenovic. Still around. Not really developing, though. He's not able to get that other Alf star. Colin Greening. Braden Shan. Pat Maroon. Mike Hoffman. Stefan da Costa. Jim O'Brien. Derek Grant. Of course, it takes even longer because I, you know, for the first time I have 50 contracts. <laughs> All right. You know, Nidrider. Dave Dorzinski. Roden. Justin Abdelkader. All right, and that's everybody. So everybody's up to come and play some exhibition games. Now I have to give a whole bunch of numbers. Uh, Nino Nidrader would like 22, but he can't have it, so he will have to be happy with 25. Jared Cowan can have number two. That's what he wore when he was in Ottawa. All right. Drezinovich can have number 57. Dave Rosinski would like number 22. Well, guess what? You can't have it 62. No, not 62. Um, 52 it is. In honor of Adam Foote. There you go. Jim O'Brien would like number 24. We're going to give him number 40. Lucas Bisa wants number 5. 7 it is. Patrick Maroon would like number 19. 18 it is. You want 19 as well. 50 it is. 21. About 69. There you go. You can make jokes about your number if you want. Right. Jeff Glass, number one. Brian Lee would like number 15. There you go. <clears throat> that is probably the part of my playthrough that I dislike the most. Having to go through like one on one like that and you know recall everybody one at a time and then assign a number and there's ve it's tedious. There's very little fun to be had in that. Alright, let's see who's getting better here. Oh, that's ro ro that guy didn't get better at all. And Shara's losing ability. Hmm. 
All right. Okay, so we are starting preseason finally, and we are going to start that in Florida against the Panthers. Let's take a look at their lineup, see if they made some good acquisitions. We do know that they have they have Greg Rallo, who's been <coughs> doing the rocky thing, I guess. All right, no injuries in Florida. Yeah, they have a better team than they used to. Uh, not in net, though. It's still Jacob Markstrom and La Barbara. Then on D, we have G. Boomister, Carlo Kolayakovo, Jason Garrison, Eric Godbranson, Mike Kotska, Alex Petrovich, Douglas Murray. It's not incredibly good, but it's a little bit better than it used to be. <clears throat> then up front, we have. Excuse me. my goodness okay sorry some my throat is acting up in all kinds of ways today uh, up front we have Tanner Glass, Nathan Orton, Matt Molson, Greg Campbell, Dadonov, Kessler, Rallo, Tatsasek, Maxim Sushinsky, uh, Frolik, Frolov, Stewart, Uzelius and Oreskovich so it's an okay team, uh, definitely better than it uh, has been, um, but it's still not a world beater for sure. So let's go ahead and see if we can beat them. All right, our new acquisition, David Leguan, is going to be playing on the third line with Chris Kelly and Justin Abdelkader for this game. All right. So we're going to send Brian Elliott in net for that game. They are going to send Jacob Markstrom and go sends go. And we won 3-2 to two in overtime. All right. So we outshot Florida 45-34. to 34. Ryan Whitney was the first star of the game. He had two assists. Jason Garrison was the second star with two assists as well. And Pavel Datsyuk was the third star with an assist. Alright, so Florida opened up the scoring in the first period, then Eric Carlson tied the game, assisted by Jason Spitzer, and then Florida scored with 18 seconds left to go in the... Oh, it was all in the second period, my apologies. So, uh, Molson scored with 18 seconds left to go in the second, and it was 2-1 to one Florida after 2. Then in the third period, Petrus Bergeron scored short-handed from Pavel Datsuk and Ryan Whitney to tie the game at two. And it went all the way in overtime, where Zdeno Sharp played Eero, scoring the overtime winner from Ryan Whitney. And 3-2 was the final score. Victory for the Suns to open up the preseason calendar. All right. New pads for Ray Emery. So again, I'm not too sure what the new pads do, but Ray Emery is now in New Jersey, and he has new pads. Good for you, buddy. And salary cap reminder, I'm going to write that down just to make sure. So it is going to be... 64 million... Point three zero 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 zero. Alright. So I need to make sure I don't go above that when I decide on my lineup. So kind of have to take that into consideration. Alright, now Dallas is going to be in town. And we're gonna take a look at their lineup. Of course there's no records to speak of to look at. All right, so Dallas do have an injury already, and it is paired to Lindgren, who is just day-to-day -day with a bruised finger. He's not going to play this game, but it's nothing too terrible. All right, so Jonas Seller and Mike Smith in net, so that's pretty good. Mike Smith has finally grown into his <coughs> uh, potential, so he's a three-and-a-half-star goaltender. That sounds about right. Um, 
and then Jonas Siller is a one star and a half goaltender. So they're doing pretty good. Marty Yarventi, Brendan Dillon, Andrew Alberts, Matt Niskanen, Ruslan Sully, and uh, Nathan Oistrich on D. That D is not all that great. Up front, it's better. Uh, you see Jokinen, Danny Eatley, Brendan Dobinski, Rob Klinkhammer. Oh, he played in Ottawa for a for a few there. I remember his uh, his name. I think it's Thomas Vincor. Yeah, Thomas Vincor, James Neal, Tom, no Taylor Payet or Tom, Taylor Payet, Jerome McGinley, Tim Stapleton. Lindgren, Jimmy Ben, Daniel Alfredson that he just got in a trade, Alish Emski, Derek Dorsett, and Chris Torburn. That's an interesting team. Alright, let's see here. Alright, so we're definitely not going with our best players here. So we might lose that. They're going with Jonas Heller in net. We're going with Ansi Niemi. And we lost 3 to 2. Like I said, we really weren't going with our strongest team there. Uh, they outshot us 35 to 24. Brandon Dobinski, freshly acquired, uh, got a goal and two assists. Mike Hoffman was the second star with a goal, and Nathan Oistrick was the third third star with two goals so the game was in Ottawa we had 13,632 people in attendance for this game um, so Dallas scored first in the first period and then they scored again in the second made it 2-0 then Mike Hoffman scored from Brian Lee and Nick Drazenovich made it 2-1 Dallas at that point then the Dallas made it 3 to 1. Then Stefan Da Costa gave us some hope on the power play with a minute and 59 to go in the third period. Uh, assisted by Jacob Silverberg. It was 3 to Dallas, but we could never tie the game after that. Big game for Alex Ovechkin, who had three goals. Hat trick against Nashville. Strong game for Blake Wheeler in Phoenix. He had a hat trick as well against the Kings. Alright, and we are now going to be facing the Nashville Predators in Nashville. And we traded twice with them. Let's take a look at their lineup. They already had a pretty strong lineup, and I gave them some players. Well, didn't give them. But, uh,. Yeah, All right, so Chad Johnson and pick a Rene in net. So as long as Rene is in net, it's a pretty strong team. Then, oh, they have the wrong flag for pick Rene. Pretty sure that pick Rene is not French. Uh, Dan Amius, Kevin Klein, Ryan Suter, Cody Franz, and uh, Ryan Ellis, Shea Weber, Marek Zedlikin, Anton Babchuk, Andy. That D is still really good, although Ryan Suter is not going to play this game. Uh, Steve Bernier, uh, Steve Downey, Scott Hartnell, Vernon Fiddler, Todd White, Jan Bulish, Brandon Reed, Nick Spaling, Colin Wilson, Martin Erat, Tyler Seguin, Patrick Hornquist, and Gabriel Bork. Right, so it looks like I traded them Mike Fisher for David Leguan and they didn't resign him. That's on them, not on me. All right, they did uh, re-sign Tyler Seguin, though. so he is going to be playing. All right, so let's see if we can beat them now. Uh, we're going back to Antsy Niemi, and they are going to play Pecorini. And we lost 4-3. They outshot us 33 to 26. Dan Amius was the first star. He had two assists. Petrus Bergeron was the second star with two assists. And Patrick Hornquist was the third star with a goal and an assist. We took a 3 0 lead into the first period. That, that looked good. So Jason Spezza from Petrus Bergeron. Then Pavel Datsyuk from Petrus Bergeron and Eric Carlson. And then Colin Greening from Patrick Eves. 3 0 Sands. After one, it looked pretty promising, but then in the second period, it was all Nashville. They tied the game up with three goals of their own there. Then there was a fight between Mark Borowiecki and Vernon Fiddler. 
And in the third period, Colin Wilson scored. That made it 4-3 Nashville, and that score would hold, so we lost that 4-3. And Jared Cowan is hurt, and he is out for three months with a ruptured foot tendon. Yikes, those hurt. I had a, I had tendonitis to my Achilles when I was, I want to say, eighteen, and that hurt like a mother fudge sickler. So, yeah. Right, and we are going to O's Pittsburgh. Oh, Brad Stewart in San Jose is hurt. He has torn ankle ligaments. He's out for five months. Oh, Jeff Glass is our own Jeff Glass. Uh, gives time to the fans during a uh, training camp. You're a better p person now. Maybe you could be rewarded with a start. Come on, Lindy Ruff, you can do it. All right, so Pittsburgh in town, so they are going to be very good again. Let's take a look here. All right, so they have an injury. Uh, is it Sim or Tyler Kennedy? Tyler Kennedy is hurt. He's not going to be playing. Uh... Mark andre Fleury in net, and some guy I've never heard of, and I'm sure I'm going to have problems saying his name, Goopfert? Goopfert? Anyway, that guy is the backup. Uh, Christian Eroff, Alex Galigoski, Scott Arrington, Brooks Arpik, Petteri Numelin, and Jeff Finger on D. So the D is it or miss. Uh, Yarmir Jagger is still there at 39 years old. Uh, Dustin Jeffrey, Eric Selleck, Pio Rala, Crosby Malkin, Morin, Stahl, Blake, Esch, Dearne, Kennedy Sharp, Bennett, and Ryan Malone. Yeah, it's going to be uh, another strong season for the Penguins. They don't have a great D, though. They don't have that. Alright, Bobby Gopfert in net for Pittsburgh, Brian Elliott in net for us. And we won 3 to 1. We outshot Pittsburgh 39 to 21. Ryan Whitney was the first star, he had an assist. David DeArne was the second star with an assist. And Alexander Redulov was the third star with a goal. 13,538 people in attendance for this game. Uh, and it looks like all the scoring happened in the second period. So we have Petrus Bergeron scoring first from Pavel Datuk and Jason Spezza. Then Pittsburgh tied the game. And then Radulov scored from Braden Shen and Eric Kondra. And finally Joe Thornton from Ryan Whitney. 3-1 to one is the final score. Ryan Whitney is playing pretty good in this preseason. Yuri Hoodler has a memorable game. He had a hat trick against Dallas. All right. We are about to host the Calgary Flames. We have three more preseason games to play, all against Western teams. All right, so Calgary is in town. Let's take a look at their lineup. Oof. There's a few things going on here. All right, first of all, they only have 21 people on their lineup. And uh, Casey Wellman is hurt and he's not going to play. How long are you hurt for? One to two weeks left. Okay. Then Tony Ludman is suspended. And finally, Leyland Irving is hurt but should be able to play. Uh, so it's Craig Anderson, whom the Sens yesterday in real life uh, said that they are not going to offer him another contract. It kind of makes sense. And he's been very good for the Sens, but he's 39. So there's that. Uh, Leland Irving, then on D, Mark Giordano, TJ Brody, Tony Ludman, Nicholas Cronwall, Dion Faneuf, uh, Ryan Wilson, and uh, Mike Noro or something like that. Uh, that is pretty competent. Eric Nystrom, Brandon Sutter, 
Sven Barchi, Lance Buma, Yuri Novotny, Blair Betts, Andrew Cracknell, Chuck Cabasu, Sean Thornton, Chad LaRose, and Casey Wellman. Yeah, the goaltending and the D's fine in Calgary, but the forwards, that's... Oof, that's uh, there's a... There's a little bit of a scoring, t scoring touch missing. So Craig Anderson's gonna be in net for Calgary. We are going to Brian Elliott. And we lost 3-2 in overtime. Alright, so we outshot Calgary 56 to 18. Ryan Wilson was the first star of the game. He had a goal. Nick Drazinovich was the second star with a goal for us. And Craig Anderson, third star with 54 saves. Right, we had 12,595 people in, a, in a attendance for this game. And we scored first in the first period. It was a Nick Drazinovich power play goal from Joe Thornton and Jason Spitzer. So the young guy getting some power play time with the big guys there. And then in the second period, Calgary tied the game. So it was tied at one after two. And then in the third period, we have Kaspars Dagovan scoring shorthanded, assisted by Petrus Bergeron. And then Calgary tied the game and brought it to overtime, where nobody scored. So it went to the shootout. And Dion Phaneuf scored the game winner at that point. Kaspars Dagovan uh, gets better at right wing. Now we're going to hop on a plane and go to St. Louis to play against the Blues. Oh, Patrick Sharp is hurt in Pittsburgh and he's going to miss four months. Ouch. A fracture coracoid bone in his shoulder. Sucks to be you, buddy. Alright, so two games left. This one is in St. Louis. Oh, I almost didn't check their lineup. Alright, so St. Louis has Ben Bishop and Jan Dennis in that, so that should be fine. Jonathan Erickson, Andy Green, Andrew McDonald, Kyle Quincy, Steve Eminger, Eric Johnson, and Roman Palakandi. So that D is actually pretty decent. Uh, Nicholas Agman, Jay McClement, Jeff Platt, Zinoviev, Jay Beagle, Riku Hall, Patrick Berglund, Michael Hanzos, David Backus, Lars Eller, Alexander Simon, Dale Weiss, Sean Avery, and Lee Stempniak. That team is fairly well rounded, I find. They could make some splashes this season. So we're going to go with Antti Niemi. Jan Dennis is going to be in net for St. Louis. And we won 2 to nothing. Uh, we outshot the Blues 32-22. Braden Shan was the first star. He had an assist. Eric Johnson was the second star without any stats. And Eric Carson was the third star with an assist. So Alexander Radulov scored in the first period from Eric Carson and Sam Ghani. It was one nothing Sands at that point. Then in the all the way in the third period, Joe Thornton scored on the power play from Jason Spitz and Braden Shen, and two nothing was the final score. And we have one last preseason game before we finish the video here. And it's going to be against the Minnesota Wild. And it's going to be at home. One of one of the players that were offered to me for Marianosa was um, Benoit Pouliot. So I decided to not take him until I went with Yoni Pitkinen. All right, so in Minnesota, Marian Gaborik is hurt. So he's not going to be playing this game. Uh, in net, it's Nicholas Backstrom and Matt Hackett. Then on D, it's Nick Lady, Nate Gannon, Chris Letang, Nick Schultz, Keith Yandel, and Clayton Stoner. That D is fairly good. Oh, they have more. Sorry, Dustin Buffy and Brad Burns and Ron Ainsley. Okay, that D is really good. <laughs> oh. Uh, Alright, and then Cal Clutterbark. Cal Clutterbuck. David Clarkson, Benoit Pouliot, Francis Watier, Patrick Eliash is still there. Still a three-star player, too. Uh, 
uh, Matt Cullen, Matthew Lombardi, uh, it's Justin Fontaine, Ryan Jones, Ian LaPerriere, Steven Stamkos is with the Wild, and Pierre Marc Bouchard. Wow. Yeah, that boosts you a team to get Steven Stamkos just like that. So the Lightning screwing things up again. Uh, and then you add Yabarik to that because he's hurt. So that's a pretty good team, actually. The Wild should be in the playoffs. Matt Hackett is going to be in net for them. We are going to Ansi Niemi. And we won 4-3 in overtime. Uh, we outshot Minnesota 36-29. to Petrus Bergeron was the first star of the game. He had a goal and an assist. Steven Stemkos was a second star with a goal and an assist. And Ryan Whitney was a third star with an assist. So 13,609 people in attendance for this game. Um, Minnesota scored first in the first period. And then they scored again in the second, made it 2 0. Then in the third period, Alex Petranger was scored from Patrick Keeves and Brooks Like. Then Minnesota, Minnesota scored again, made it 3 1. And we managed to tie the game before the end of the period. Petrus Bergeron scored on the power play from Zdeno Shara and Andre Mizaros. And Pavel Datsyuk from Petrus Bergeron and Ryan Whitney tied at 3. We went in overtime, nobody scored. We went in the shootout where we got goals from Datsyuk and Bergeron. And that was enough to get the W. All right. A great night for Jamie McGinn with the Sharks. He had a hat trick against Tampa Bay. And Anton Volchenkov is doing better. He has a slight injury. All right, so we're going to go ahead and stop that here. So we are going to be uh, opening the game on the road with a game in Detroit and then a game in Toronto. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save my game. Of course, prior to the next video, I'm going to go ahead and decide who makes the team. But for now, uh, we're going to go ahead and call it a day. So I do want to thank you for tuning in. And as usual, if you've liked the video, please feel free to like, subscribe, share, comment, all of that good stuff. And until I roll this game again, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.